recording. Thank you, Zoom. My name is Brandon Dudley. I am the chair of the California Aluna Regional Users Group, and it is my pleasure to introduce Yol Kortik to you. Yol has a master's in Jewish history and a master's in library science, both from Hebrew University in Jerusalem. From 1993 to 2000, he worked in various roles in libraries in Jerusalem. And then in February 2000, he began working for Ex Libris in the Jerusalem headquarters. He's held various roles in support, product management, and professional services. Yol is currently the senior librarian working in the global knowledge delivery team. Take it away, y'all. Okay, thank you. So um, data visualization on the Ex Libris higher education platform. I say on the higher education platform because it covers not only Alma and not only Primo, Leganto, Esploro, everything that's on the higher education platform. Uh, when I say Primo, I mean Primo V. And we're going to look at data visualization examples, both in Alma and in Primo V. Uh, this is from the official itinerary of the conference, and it states what I just stated now. We're going to see how to use DV to create various visualizations for both Alma and Primo. DV, data visualization, uh, is similar to Alma Analytics but the stress is more on the visualizations. It's got more visualizations, the ability to display visualizations together to interact when there are two visualizations and we'll look at examples along the way. Uh, this is what we plan on doing. Uh, first, we're gonna look at a map visualization in Primo data visualization, showing which countries are accessing the Primo discovery users from which countries. Then we're gonna look at the device usage, how, which devices are being used, a PC, laptop, iPhone, iPad, Android, what devices are being used to access the discovery. Then we're gonna move to Alma and look at something called a forecast. One of the features in data visualization that doesn't exist in Alma Analytics is the ability to do a forecast when we have measures for several years, we can predict via various algorithms that are pre-built in, we'll discuss it, uh, to predict what will happen in the future. Then we'll look at some counter usage using data visualization. And then time permitting, I'm not sure if we're gonna get to the fifth bullet here, a calculation, a customized field, a way to change the values that appear in the default out of the box fields. So that's our plan. Uh, this is links to further reading about what we're gonna show. Some of the things here are what, we're, what we will be showing. For example, the map visualization and the device usage are two of the examples we'll be showing. These are YouTube videos and these are blogs on the developers network. I will forward this after the session to whoever will be distributing it and taking charge in the conference. So without further ado, let's begin. Everything I'm gonna be showing now is gonna be live. We're done with the PowerPoint and let's jump in. And also one other thing, if you have questions or comments, you don't have to wait until some future time. Um, go ahead and just say, your question or write in a chat and let me know. Okay, so I wanna begin with Primo data visualization and use that map visualization that I discussed. The first thing, I'm in Alma now. And if I go to the analytics menu, I see a link to data visualization and a link to data visualization Primo. The reason I see those links, I'm in the regular Alma menu, not the configuration menu. And the reason I see those links is because I have the role designs analytics. Anyone with the role designs analytics will see both the design analytics and the data visualization links. The data visualization primo that my mouse is on right now with the little star next to it, that appears if the institution has Primo V. 
So I'm going to click now that data visualization primo. And as you see, a new tab opened. It says, please wait on the top. And that's logging in now. It logged in now to the data visualization of Primo. Now we'll create something called a project. In analytics, we create an analysis, which is a report. And the term in data visualization is a project. So I'm going to click the create on the top right and then choose project. And now I can create the project. And inside the project, I can take my data either from a data set, which right now in this demo environment, I do not have. Data sets are files that can be loaded to Alma. That's to, to the data visualization. That's another feature that doesn't exist in analytics. I can load an Excel file. I didn't choose to do that during this one hour session. That would be a session just for that. And the subject areas are the same subject areas that appear in this case in Primo Analytics. And if we had gone into Alma data visualization, which we'll do later on, it's the same subject areas as the um, Alma Analytics. So here I've got all of the subject areas and I'm gonna take the Primo sessions. So I'm selecting the Primo sessions and I'm gonna click add to project. Before I do that, I can display these in different ways. Now in Primo, there's six subject areas. In Alma, there's a lot of subject areas. And you can display them different ways. I click now this icon here to go to list view. And I can start typing. I'm putting an S here on top and then an E. And now I get only those with an SE in it and then an SCS. So now I can also type in order to get the subject area I'm looking for, and I'm choosing Primo Sessions. So now on the left, which is called the data panel here, this is the data panel where it says Primo Sessions, Sessions, etc. These are the fields just like I would see in Primo Analytics. And this where it says drop visualizations or data here slightly to the right center of the screen, that's called the canvas, kind of like a painting when someone paints on the canvas. Well, here we're dragging fields into the canvas and then creating our visualization. So I'm gonna drag into there these sessions. I'm opening the sessions folder on the left in the data panel, and I'll take the sessions and I'm dragging it in and I'm just gonna drop it in the panel. And I have now a visualization of how many sessions there were all together in Primo. I haven't done anything by year or anything else. That's the total. Up here on the left, where it says tile now, that's the type of visualization that appears. And by default, if I drag in only a measure, this is called a measure because it's just a, a number, uh, then automatically it gives me a tile, a, what's called a performance tile. It also says auto visualization because it was automatically chosen by the data visualization. I'm going to change it now to a table. So now I've got a very basic table and I'm going to take now the country. I'm going to go to the user country locations folder and take this country. Now I can drag that also into the canvas or I can drag it here into what's called the grammar panel and put it just above or just after the sessions. I'm gonna drop it right here, just above where it says sessions, below where it says rows. I'm gonna drop it with my mouse. And now I have a table of the country and how many sessions um, came from that country. How many users were in, in the first case, Afghanistan and then Albania? How many sessions came from that country to search the primo discovery of the institution I'm coming from? Then I can start playing around now and changing it around. For example, maybe I only want 
countries where there's at least 100 sessions. So there's many different ways to create filters. And throughout this one hour presentation, I'm going to use different methods. So as far as sessions go, I'm going to click the sessions here in the grammar panel, left click, a regular mouse click, and choose create filter. And up on top, it automatically gives me by range. We'll see later, there's other ways to do the filters of a measure other than range. Right now we're using range and I'm gonna say the minimum is gonna be 100. I can also drag, I can drag these, but I'm gonna say 100, enter. Okay, so now I've got 100 as my minimum and the country and the sessions. Everything's good. And let's sort this. I'm gonna click here, high to low. So now it's sorted by the highest. I'm in a United States demo environment. So of course the highest, I shouldn't say of course, but typically uh, the country that the Primo is in, that the institution is in, that's where most of these of the sessions are coming from. In this case, United States is 4 million and the closest after that Korea is 13 million. If my goal is to see where are people searching my catalog from, then I'm going to remove the United States. So I'll filter out the United States. There's several ways to do that. One way is I'm gonna right click it right here. I selected it and then right clicked and I'll say remove selected. Now up on top, it automatically created a filter, which is country and then United States is blocked out or lined out. So now I have everything except for the United States, every country that has more than 100 sessions. Now I'm gonna create a map visualization from this. So here on the left, where it says table on the top of the grammar panel, I can choose many different visualizations. This is where the unique um, advantage of the data visualization comes into play. And I'm going to choose this map. So now I've got a map. And this blue line is moving across the top, if you notice. OK, it finished. Every time you do a, a, a heavy function or a change, there's a blue line that moves across the top, it finished. So now I've got a map. Now this is similar to another visualization which exists in many different um, ways of doing visualization called, it's similar to a heat map where the darker the color, the higher the value. So for example, here, Canada, is a dark color, 13,000 sessions. Then here, China, 11,000 sessions. So I can automatically very easily see here uh, the different sessions I've got and the countries. And I can also uh, zoom in. So I'm gonna zoom in now. I'm just using my mouse. I'm using the scroll on the mouse. And if I'm not on the scroll on the mouse, I can use the, the, the laptop mouse, whatever it is. And I can scroll in. For example, here, I'm focusing in now on Western Europe. So now I can see United Kingdom have 7,000 sessions, Germany 6,000. Um, I can jump into the Middle East here. Let's see what's going on in the Middle East right here. And here we are. So I see here, is Israel's got 1,729, Egypt 1,038, Lebanon 195. These are the numbers that went in it's where somebody went and searched the catalog. Now I'm zooming back out. And if I want to display this together with that table we saw at the beginning, I can do that too by duplicating this visualization, then having two visualizations. One will be a table and one will be a map. So for example, I'm gonna right click, which gets to the menu. I can also get to the menu by clicking this uh, icon here of four lines and saying edit, 
duplicate visualization. So now I've got two visualizations. And this one on the right, I'm going to make a table. So the one on the right, I'll choose here, change the visualization type, only the one on the right. And I'll make that the table. I chose the table and the visualization. It also, as you see, looks like the heat map where the darker the color, the more sessions there are. I could change that by taking these sessions and instead of leaving it in the color section in the grammar panel, drag it here with the rows. And now I've got a regular old fashioned table with the, uh, the country and the amount. And I can sort this again by saying high to low, and then I've got the big ones on the top. Then I can take this, and if I want to view this now, I can remove the, the grammar panel here and remove the data panel. On the bottom right, there's two icons. This one's toggle data panel. On the bottom left, uh, excuse me, on the bottom right, I'm going to click toggle data panel. Now the data panel collapsed. Then on the bottom right, I'm going to click toggle grammar panel. The grammar panel also um, collapsed. And now I'm going to share this, share it as a file. I see the chats are coming in. I'm going to look at them in a moment. So if I click here, this icon of share on the top, three icons to the left of the four lines right here where I'm clicking share. And then I can export it in various ways. So I'm going to export it to a file. And in this case, to a file of PowerPoint. OK, I'll put it in A4, which is what we use here locally and landscape. So now it's it's saving as a file. And we'll open that. And then I'm going to go look at the chat and we'll talk about whatever people are asking or commenting on. exporting as a PowerPoint, and then we'll open that up and see what's going on. Let me first look at the chats while that's going on, so we're saving time. Uh, someone asks, is there a time for questions? I'd like to learn the best way to share interactive views with users, people who don't necessarily have analytics roles. Okay, so by chance, I'm, answer, I'm looking at your question while I'm answering it without even knowing that that was the question. So the way to share the views with other people is to do what I just did, to click the share. Let's open the PowerPoint. And then after you click the share, you can put it out as a PowerPoint. Now I've got the PowerPoint here. I'm going to close this. Or we could have exported it to... Uh, and a PDF or just to an image. In the case of a table, we could export it to a CSV. In the future, there are future plans to eventually make these data visualization projects be like the Alma Analytics, ways to make them uh, analytics objects, which means it can be a scheduled report, a dashboard, a widget, et cetera. Right now, that is not possible, but that is in the in the plans. So the way to share it now is by clicking the share icon, file, and then choosing one of those options, which is a PDF, a, a, uh, an image file, a PowerPoint, or a CSV, which you can play around with in Excel. Um, let's see what else we got. Um, is there a way to take an existing Primo Analytics report and generate a data visualization by linking it. Uh, no, there's not a way to convert, for lack of a better word, a analytics report to a data visualization report. That's what it sounds like you're asking. You say, take an existing Primo analytics report and generate a data visualization by linking it. No. Uh, then we've got a question. This is such a great example. Love the use of the map next to table for this visualization. Great. I'm glad you like it. Uh, I am interested to see the data from U.S. breakdown by state. Can we do that? Thanks. Let's take a look at what we can do. 
Uh, and then I'll go back to the other questions. I'm glad to see these questions. That means people are interested. Um, I'm always concerned when we start doing something and there's not a lot of questions. I'm going to open the grammar panel again. So on the bottom, I'm choosing grammar panel. So in addition, and then I'm going to also get the data panel open. So these are the ones we can do. Um, there is nothing for state. Uh, there is latitude, longitude, latitude, though, um, because we had an issue with the state. I, I'm recalling now with the United States and states, because the world is broken down usually into a country, a region, and a city. Let's just say for our purposes, no, you can't get it by state here. You can play around with the latitude and the longitude, uh, uh, but it's not going to say Tennessee 50, uh, Kentucky 30, and Nevada 20. No. Uh, sometimes the answer is just no. I can try to make it uh, you know, sound wonderful, but no, you can't get it by state. Sorry. Okay. Um, anything else? Okay. So it looks like I answered them, all the questions. Okay. So let's move on now to another one, uh, another visualization. Let me just make sure I got them. Yes, it does look like I did. Okay, so let's stay. We're going to do one more in the Primo Analytics before we move to Alma Analytics. And I see we're still less than half done, so we're on track. So now um, I'm going to start over. I didn't even save this. I'm going to save it because later I want to show something. I'm going to click save on the top right. And now I can save this in my folders or just like the whole entire um, directory structure where we have the Alma folder or the Primo folder and then the name of the institution folder and the community folder. It's all the same here. And I'll call this map of sessions accessing Primo. And then I've got it. Okay. Now, I could from here just choose create a new project and start a new one. If I click these four lines, the menu on the top right, I've got create new project. Or on the very top left where there's three lines where it says navigator, where I've got my mouse now left of where it states Oracle Analytics, here I can come home or I can go to catalog and the catalog, I'll go to shared folders. So now I'm looking at the shared folders, but I'm looking at it. I'm on the top right in a grid view. If I go to this list view, it's just like if I was in anywhere else, I'm in the Primo community. Um, everything's, everything's the same way. I'm going to save the next one in the Primo community so we can see how it works that we open it. Because here in the reports, we've got, yeah, I'm going to save the next one here in the reports because we'll see you can open an Alma Analytics report or a data visualization report uh, project from the same place. But let's focus and go back home. And now I'm at the beginning again. I'm at as if I had chosen from Alma to go to analytics and data visualization Primo because I went here to the menu and home. So then I'm going to again create a project. And again, we'll go to subject areas. And this time I'm going to choose Primo device usage. And the scenario here is that I want to know what devices are people using? When I say device, I mean, are they using their laptop? Are they using an, an Android phone? Are they using an iPhone? Are they using WinPhone, iPod, Blackberry? Because we even see those in the places that have been on Primo for quite some, on Primo V for quite some time. Um, I don't know how many people here in the session had a Blackberry, um, but anyway, so let's take a look. So under device usage here on the left, I'll choose the number of sessions. And I drag in that into the canvas. And again, 
by default, I got a visualization. Excuse me, I got a, a tile. It says auto visualization tile. And I can change it to whatever I'd like. I'm going to change it to a table. I click here where it says auto visualization. That's where I choose which visualization do I want to use. And I'm going to choose here the table. Just because at the beginning, before I choose my final visualization, it's easiest to look at it in a table. Then I'm going to filter. Before I put in the next field, I'll filter. Now, there's a recommendation by the official Oracle Analytics. Oracle, uh, Oracle is the... Uh, the tool that we're using here, it's called Oracle Analytics Server, the official, that's the tool supplying the data visualization. It's a third party tool, we can call it. A recommendation of adding the filter before adding all the fields, because then it works quicker, because it's on a smaller set of data. So I'm before I even add the next field, I'm gonna put in a filter. So under dates, I'm gonna add the filter. And I'm going to say I only want years, the year of 2020 and 2021, the last two years. I'm not interested in what they were doing in 2019, 18, 17, et cetera. So now I'm going to create a, fee, a, a filter differently. I'm going to drag it to the top where it says drop here to add filter. I'm dragging it and dropping it. Now I only want 2020, so I'll choose 2020 and I'll choose 2021. So now I've got the sessions for 2020 and 2021. Now I'm going to drag the year in, dragging it into the canvas. Then I'll drag the month in. Now there's several months. I'm going to take the month number because later I'm going to want to make a, a line graph, which will put it in alphabetical order not alphabetical, uh, numerical order. So if the month is a number, 01 for January, 02 for February, it'll go in order. Whereas January, February, February will be before January in alphabetical order. So I'm dragging in the month number, putting it there. And now I've got everything in the order, but I want the device. So now we'll take the device. Under device usage, we have the actual device. And I'm going to drag the device in. I'll drag it first at the beginning here because I want to show something. So laptop PC, we all know that laptop PC, let's in fact get rid of the year and number for a moment. I'm going to, in the grammar panel, I'm going to click this X next to the year and month because I want to show something. So the laptop and PC, we know that that's the main way that people come and search Primo. I mean, we're not like Amazon or there are some applications or internet sites where the majority of people do use an iPhone, I mean, a, a mobile device. Primo, we know the majority are on a real computer, a laptop or a PC, whatever. So that's the highest. Then I've got seven with an iPod and three with a wind phone. But if my goal is to see really what devices are people using, I know they're using the laptop PC. And the iPod and wind phone is probably just left over from sometime in the past, beginning of 2020, maybe. I'm going to select those three, the laptop, the iPad, and the wind phone, and remove them. Because I want to see among the Android, iPad, and iPhone, what are they using? Because if I want now, for example, to start customizing my discovery interface, I want to make sure it's appropriate for these devices. So I'm going to right click it and say remove selected. If you notice, we've done this several different methods of creating a filter. We've clicked the field here in the grammar panel and then done create filter. We drag the field up to the top and we also now right clicked and said remove. So now I've got these three. Now I'm going to put the year back and I'm going to put the month number back. So now I see excuse me, year, the year and the month. And now let's see, are there trends with this? Did they used to be using the Android very much and now they don't or the iPhone or, or whatever it is? 
the iPad. So because I have the year of the month and those three devices, I can put these in a line graph. So where it says table on the top left, I will instead choose line graph. And now I need to make it look logical. Right now, what it did by default, as you see on the X axis, the one going horizontal, I've got the year, the month, and then the device. But I, I don't want that. I want the devices to be together by different colors. So in the Y axis, I have the number of sessions. That's good. In the X axis, I'll put the year and the month. I have that already. And the device, there's another section here called color. I'll put the device in the color, and now I get a nice line graph with different colors per device. And I see the three devices. We've got the Android is blue, the iPad is green, the iPhone is yellow. They're following the same patterns. We see, for example, that in February 2020 here, they all went up. They came down um, May, June. By the way, this is interesting if we want to do a study on the corona, because the corona became big in March. March, all the travel stopped. I remember that. March, that was when you're not going anywhere. And we see also it went down here. Then people realized, okay, we got to get back to normal somehow. People started using the system again. It came back up. But the three devices are all following the same patterns. The iPad is always the smallest, followed by the Android. The iPhone is always the biggest. But they're following the same patterns as far as the up and down. So here I see the patterns. And I see, okay, we need to take into account all of them. They're all being used. But if I really want to know the amounts, then I'll put this in another visualization. And I'm going to use a donut now. So I'll duplicate this one because I want to keep this one. And I'll also view the donut. So duplicate like we did last time. I'll choose the menu here and then edit duplicate visualization. And like we said last time, instead of clicking the menu, I could do a right click which is pretty much standard in most systems. The right click is like the menu, excuse me. So I'll do the edit and the duplicate. And now here, I'm going to make this a donut. So here we've got this icon, which looks like a graph. Uh, this one, it's three to the left right here where my mouse is, change visualization type. And I'll choose the donut. The sunburst is also a nice one, but let's choose the donut for now. Now, different than what we did with the map. In the map, we also duplicated div visualization, but we had the same fields in each visualization. Now, in the donut, I'm going to have different fields. So we don't need the year and the month in the donut. So while I'm focused on the donut, you can see there's a blue line around it because I'm focused on the donut. I'm going to remove the year. So in the, in the grammar panel, I have my mouse next to the year. I'm going to click the X. Same with the month. So now my donut no longer has the year and the month. And I see, OK, 59% of all the, the, the devices that are being used to access my discovery are iPhones, 25% are Android, 15% are iPhone. Now, at the beginning, I mentioned something about the interaction between the visualizations. So on the right, I've got the donut. On the left, I have the line graph. The line graph has additional fields. I'm going to go back and select the line graph. And you see in the category x-axis, I have year and month. If I focus on the on the donut, I've got I don't have the year and the month. I have sessions and device. And if I click on one of these, for example, the Android, you see on the left, I've got these little uh, circles on the line. And if I click now on iPhone, so what it, it has the little circles on the iPhone on the yellow line. So when I click on one side, it influences the other side with some more, it, it says which one I'm on. So I'm not only choosing the iPhone here, I can see the pattern of the iPhone usage. 
And let me save this one. And then I see there's two chats. I'm going to take them in a minute. So I'm going to save this one in the community because on purpose, I want to show something. I'll go to the share folders and I'll go to the community, Primo community. And I'll save this in reports. And I'm going to call this, are there regular things here or just directories? Yeah, there are. Great. So I'm going to call this uh, Primo Devices with Donut and Line Graph. OK, and I'm going to get to those questions in a minute. Now I want to show something. Save. If I were to come in now, again, either to data visualization or analytics. I'm going to go into design analytics, Primo. The way I usually describe this is it's like Windows Explorer. If you go into Windows Explorer and you click a Word document, it opens in Word. And if you click an Excel file, it opens in Excel. And if you click a PowerPoint, it opens in PowerPoint. So same here, if I go to shared folders and I go to Primo community and I go to reports. So right now, if I click, I don't even know what this BX report is, but if I click this, it's an analytics report. It will open in Alma analytics because like if I click a, uh, a Word document in Windows Explorer, it opens in Windows Explorer. And if I were to click, uh, there it goes, it's opening now in Alma Analytics and it opened my Alma Analytics report. But if I were to click a data visualization, it will open in data visualization. And that's what I'll do now. So this one here, Primo Devices with Donut and Line Graph, that's the one we saved. If I click that, which I'll do in a second, it will open in data visualization. And you can see also there's a different icon. Just like if I was in Windows Explorer, there would be one icon for a PowerPoint file, one icon for an Excel file, and one icon for a whatever file, Word, provided I was not in the list details, I was in the icons, whatever. So now if I click the Primo device usages, it'll open that um, Primo data visualization. Here it is that we made before. Okay, that session is complete, and I'm going to go to the chat and see what we got. Is there any way to forecast future country action based on existing country action user? Okay, we're gonna talk about the next one we're gonna do right now is about doing a forecast. So let's wait on that. I'm gonna do a forecast right now. If we, as let's put it this way though, if we can make a line graph that includes measures and an attribute, an attribute in this case would be country, then yes, you can make a measure, a, a forecast, and we're going to do a forecast now um, in a different area. But yes, you could do a forecast on countries and sessions, and I'm going to do a forecast on expenditures. Can you show a project by popular search? Okay. Uh, it wasn't in the plan, but yes, I'll show a project by popular search. I'll do it very quickly. Then we'll go on to the regularly scheduled program. So if we want a project by popular searches, we I'm going to click the menu here. I'm, I'm very glad that people are interested here because it, it means there's interest. So I click the menu on the top right and create new project. And we'll go to subject areas. So if we want the exact um, phrasing in the question is popular search. So I'm going to go to the Primo popular searches here. And th this is a nice one because it's a good way for the institution to deal with collection management. What kind of materials are people searching for? And that can be by the LC classification. It can be by the words, the words in the search, et cetera. Um, which is by the way, but now we're, we're getting off, but by the way, the search terms is actually the best way to find out what are people really looking for rather than usage. Because when you look at usage, you're looking at what they found and used, but it's not necessarily what they wanted in the first place. 
the counter usage, the link resolver usage. So we see what they're using, but it doesn't mean necessarily that that's what they wanted. Whereas we're, if we're looking at search terms, then we know that's what they wanted in the first place, but we'll save that for another day. Um, so here we've got popular searches, searches. So this is a measure, number of searches. So if I drag this one in to the, to the canvas, I'm gonna get a, a tile, a performance tile, because that's the default. And now I've got the performance tile. Then we wanna know what are those searches? So we've got here the search string. So I'm gonna change this to a table because right now, if I try to drag that in, I can't. I can, but it's gonna now look kind of funny because I'm doing, it automatically changed it by itself to a bar and I don't, I can't really use anything with this. So I'll change this to a table. Then I don't want the ones with zero, one, two, three, whatever. I'll get the big ones. So a, Filter, I see it's 2012, but that's okay. Better we, we show things that people are asking for than what was on the previously scheduled program. So if I want really what are people searching for, I want the top 100, the top 50, and we haven't done a filter like that yet. So let's do one now. So if I drag a field to the top here where it says click here or drag filter, I'll drag the search string in, not the search string, we'll drag the measure in. The measure is the number of searches. So I'm dragging it in and there we go. Now, previously when we filtered by number of sessions in the map visualization, we said is greater than a hundred, but there's another way to do this search. And that's by saying it's in the top 50, the top 100, the top 10, et cetera. So if I click this little arrow here, again, this little arrow right next to the searches, there's an option here for filter type. The default is range. But if I wanna say it's in a top or a bottom even, cause here I can say either the top or the bottom, and there might be cases where I want the highest or the lowest. This is the top 10, I can change it to the top 20, whatever. But let's say I wanna know what are the top 10 search strings that people are looking for? Let's see, what are the top 10 strings that people are looking for? I'm gonna go to the dates and take the year, drag that to the top and say 2021. In the current year, what are the top searches? Let's sort this before we sort it. Let's put it in a bar graph because I want to show that we can sort many different ways. So I'm going to choose this bar graph. Again, I chose where it says table and then bar. And now I'm going to right click this and now I can sort it in different ways. I'll sort it high to low. I could also sort it low to high. I can sort it A to Z, Z to A, which would be ascending, descending, alphabetical. This is ascending, descending, numerical. I'll say one high to low. Let's put this next to a table, actually. A table here would probably be better, actually. A bar graph looks nice, but if I really want to digest the information, I'm going to change it to a table. And then it's easy to see. So what do we have here? I'm going to sort this high to low as well. The biggest search here is the American experience, the Great War, followed by 20th century America, a brief history. Probably from what I'm thinking, those were course materials or something, but we see what are people searching for. So that's a visualization uh, for popular searches as was uh, suggested, but I wanna cover something else which is the forecast. So now we're moving on to Alma Analytics. Excuse me, to Alma Data Visualization. Until now, we showed the Primo Data Visualization. Now we'll go to the Alma Visualization, Alma Data Visualization. So again, we'll go to the menu, to Analytics, and choose Data Visualization. Not the Primo, which we chose previously, just the data visualization. And here we're gonna look in the funds expenditure subject area and compare 
expenditures for physical material against expenditures for electronic material, and then make a forecast to see how do we expect that to change in the future. So we'll choose create, just like we did at the Primo, and a project, and switch to the subject areas. And now we have a lot of them. Now, if you recall, when we showed the Primo, I said you can display them different ways. So here, if I choose these three lines, now I've got the list view, which might be easier for people. And because we've got so much now in the Alma Analytics, so many subject areas, it might be easier to start typing to find it. So I want funds expenditure. So if I type F, I find everything with an F. FU, everything with an FU in it, FUN. So I'll grab the funds expenditures, either double click it or select it and say add to project. So now we've got the funds expenditure subject area and we can start playing around. Let me do that one more time. Create new project, subject areas. Oh, okay, I'm gonna, it took a while to appear, now it's there, okay. So now we're gonna display, I'm just gonna, before we actually do it, I wanna explain what we're gonna do. We're gonna display the expenditures for physical material together with the expenditures for electronic material. Then we'll put in the expenditure, the transaction date year. So we can make a line graph of seeing the physical against the electronic. Then we'll make a forecast to see what's, what's expected to happen in the future regarding that. So under the fund transactions folder, we already have built in, this is in Alma Analytics. And like we said at the beginning, whatever appears in Alma Analytics appears here as well. So this is the transaction expenditure amount of electronic format. I'm dragging it here to the canvas, dropping it. It automatically made me a tile. And I'll take the tile and make it a table. Like we said in Primo, it's best to put things in a table so we can logically read it. Then I'm dragging the physical format. So now we have the electronic and the physical format next to each other. But that's just a huge number for the entire history of what's been done in Alma or migrated to Alma. Now let's put in the transaction date year. So we have the transaction date folder. We'll take the transaction date year here and drag that in as well. Now, when we make a forecast, just like if we were doing a forecast of the weather, the more data we have in the back, the more accurate the forecast is. Uh, rather than having a year's worth of data and creating a forecast, if we have 10 years, then of course we have more basis to make our prediction. So let's take, for example, from 2011 to 2020. We don't want 2021 because we don't want to take data that's only partial because that'll throw off the whole algorithm. So I'll right click here and say, keep selected. We already showed that that's a way to do a filter. And we see that there's a filter already made up on top here by transaction date year. Now let's put this into a line graph. So instead of table, I'll choose line right here, third count, third row, all the way on the left, line. But now let's make it look proper. We have the x-axis with a, with a year. We have the y-axis by default only showing the, the physical. I'm gonna drag here by default and put it in the color. Whenever we change the visualizations, the data visualization makes a prediction of how do we want to display the data? And it's not always what we really want. Sometimes it is. So I'll take this and drag it up here. Now we have the physical and the electronic together. And what we see here is very typical of what's happened in the world. 
The blue, as we see, is the transaction expenditure amount type physical. There's a legend on the bottom, legend being an explanation of what color corresponds to what measure. So the blue is the physical expend expenditure for physical materials. As you know, in Alma, every purchase order line can be for physical or electronic. And now we added digital a few months ago. Um, so in fact, that might be interesting in a couple of years to add digital here. Now it's you know so new. And so anyway, there was a crossover between 2013, 2014, which is very typical. Sometimes it's a little later, but that's generally the time where there's the crossover. So physical was higher than electronic until between 2014, 2013. It kept going up in the electronic, kept going down in the physical, then it leveled out, which is very typical. Now, if I want a forecast here, what's going to happen in the future? I'm going to right click, which is the same thing as the menu that we saw before. Uh, add statistics. And now one of the options is a forecast. I'll choose the forecast. Now that blue line is moving across the top. It takes 20 seconds. There, it's even less. What does it say here? According to this prediction, and we're going to talk about the ways of predicting it, the electronic is going to go down and the physical is also going to go down. We see it's going down here and it, this one went so down it's out of range. Now on the left, on the bottom left, it says model, seasonal arima. I'm going to click that. There's three models. There's seasonal arima, arima, and ETS. Now I'm going to choose arima, but I want to show something here. If I go to Alma, uh, excuse me, to Google, this arima, seasonal arima, and ETS, they're not of inventions of Ex Libris. They're built into the Oracle tool of data visualization. They're pre-made, known in the world methods of making predictions. And if I were to write here, ARIMA ETS prediction uh, algorithm, then we'll see here that there's, there's all different ways that these are made. It's it's pre-made ways that are already known in the world. It's not an it's not a invention of ours. And if someone's interested, they can go in here and see how these algorithms are made. But in any case, now I chose Arima. Now Arima, as opposed to Arima seasons, which you saw a moment ago, doesn't think they're all going to go straight. Arima thinks that it's going to go up on the electronic and down in the physical which is what most people think. I personally don't think. I, 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 people have said for years the physical is going to go down, and, and it hasn't happened, even with the corona. It went down for a couple of months, and it's back where it was already, but we'll save that for another day. Then there's another one called ETS. So I'm clicking on the bottom left where it says ARIMA, and I'm going to choose ETS. ETS usually keeps it going straight. So that blue line is moving where my mouse is here. When it gets to the end, it will um, display for us. There we go. So ETS thinks more or less it's going to stay the same way. We also have this thing, periods. It defaults to three. By the way, it defaults to seasonal arima three. I haven't seen a way to change the default um prediction method forecast method and i i looked into it now i'm going to change the periods to six where it says periods here it used to be three now it says six so in my case periods is years because that's what i'm displaying in my x in my um x-axis and it shows the physical keeps going down the electronics stays straight away I see there's a question. Let me go into the chat. I have a question, but I would like to do it on the mic. Okay, you feel free to speak. Thanks, thanks, Yul. I just, I always appreciate your presentation so much. Thank you for doing this for us on the West Coast of the United States. Um, maybe a more basic question. So I really liked seeing when you did math, line graphs and bar graphs, and 
I all I ever give to administration are tables. How do you know the right, you know, when's a good time to use a bar graph? Or do you have resources or websites you can recommend to figure out like what's the best data visualization to use for particular data? Um, I always get in my email these advertisements of these books and conferences and all kinds of things about the, the best data visualization. Um, okay, someone says here, I can recommend Edward Tuff's book on data visualizations. Okay, I'm going to in fact copy that over into my mouse so that later I can put it somewhere. Um, I can't recommend, but I can say that the data visualization has this thing here on the top left. It's called auto visualization. Oh, I love and it. it is supposed to recommend what he thinks is the best or she thinks is it, it what it thinks is the best. So let's see what, what does it think is the best here? I, I don't know if I'm going to click auto visualization. And it should change it to something else. Let's see what it changes it to. That blue line is moving along. So it changed it to an area graph. So it thinks the area graph is good. I think the line graph is better personally. Um, but no, I don't, I don't know of a way to know what you should choose as the best one. It's so fine detailed is what is, what is your ultimate goal uh, all I can say is the data visualization has this auto visualization, but it's not always so accurate. So I don't have a recommendation, but I'm going to check out that book that the person recommended. Uh, there's two other chats in there. I'm going to paste that other one that the person recommended um, here so that I can look at that later. So someone else says... Um, Someone else answers, I have some personal guidelines that I can send via email to serve. Okay, if you can include me on that, that would be good too. I'd like to, to take part in that. Um, someone else answers, the, visualization, the visual display of quantitative information is Tufts key book and almost every CSU campus has it. Okay, I'm gonna take that one and okay. All right, so we've got now two minutes. I don't think I'm going to start something new in two minutes. Um, in fact, it's one minute now. <laughs> so uh, are there any other questions or comments from anybody? The only thing that I wanted to show and didn't show is the usage data, and that's definitely going to take more than one minute, which is less than 59 seconds right now. Uh, are there any final questions or comments from anybody? No. Okay. So enjoy the rest of the conference. It looked like there's some nice things on there. I was scrolling around the itinerary and uh, hope to see everybody soon in a non-virtual world. <laughs> Have a nice day. Thanks a lot. Thank Bye -bye. you so much, Joel. And thanks for everybody else for your questions and your attention and hope to see you at future sessions in the conference. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.